Math 13, 14, Tyler Junior College, section 1.4, complex numbers. Video 5.5 out of 6. Mea culpa, I made a mistake. I went back and reviewed the division problem from the previous video, and I think it was okay. I didn't check the work. I can show you how to check it in a moment. But it dawned on me that maybe there was a mistake I made in a previous video because when I created the division problem for the previous video, I went to video four, took a multiplication problem, and reversed it into a division problem, thinking, okay, I should get an answer similar to the one I started with. Allow me to explain. And it was in video four where the mistake was made. You were probably screaming at it, you made a mistake. In video four, the second multiplication example was four plus two i times negative five plus seven i. And it got foiled out and everything went smooth until the next step. Just to recap, the first part of foil was negative 20, the outer part was positive 28i, the inner part was negative 10i, and the last part was positive 14i squared, but i squared equals negative 1, so we change it and get negative 14. Then we combine terms. And during that combination of terms, the negative 28 and the negative 14 were combined correctly into negative 34. But as I was re-watching re video 4, I said that positive 28 and negative, excuse me, positive 28i and negative 20, positive 28i and negative 10i combined to give positive 14i, which is where I made my mistake. I think when I was talking and writing, I was looking here, but I was also looking here and combined the incorrect terms. So let's correct that, but before I do, there's an important lesson to learn here. It does not matter how good you think you are at anything, you can and will make mistakes. Whether it's math, working on cars, working on a relationship, trying to get a job, whatever, mistakes will be made. But making a mistake is not a bad thing. What's bad is making a mistake and not learning from it. So I get the feeling that as I record these series of videos, more mistakes will be made. Hopefully, knock on wood, I will catch them before the end of the video so I don't have to do a retraction. But that's okay, because it doesn't matter how good you think you are, we all make mistakes, even in math, even if you're a math professor. So, how did this impact the division problem? Because when I set up video five, my plan was to take this quotient, divide it by this, which should have given me this back. And then I thought, well, I want it to be a little bit different, so I'll just change the signs, which means I should have gotten five minus seven i. The problem is this was the incorrect product. What should the correct product have been? Well, when you combine positive 28i and negative 10i, you don't get positive 14i, you get positive 18i. So when this division problem came out with the real and imaginary part that weren't integers, I was a little surprised. So what should have happened in video five? Well, had I done this problem in video four correctly, the example I would have set up in video five is not this, but it's opposite, 34 minus 18i, divided by this factor, which should have given us the opposite of this factor. So I'm going to do two things. So number one, I'm going to go through this division problem a little more quickly than, than in the previous video. I'm not going to pause to announce all the FOIL moves. But number two, I'm going to make a prediction that this is going to give us 5 minus 7i. Why not this? Because I took the opposite of this, and so I should get the opposite of that. It's equivalent to multiplying both sides of an equation by negative 1. So the important thing here to set this up is how to set it up. So how would you set up this one? Well, the same way we would set up the one in the previous video. 
To divide complex numbers, you multiply both sides of the fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. So 4 minus 2i on both sides. Now, in the previous video, this is the same full problem we had before, and it ended up being 20. So that's not going to change. What will change is the numerator. So allow me to go through this one a little bit more quickly. 34 times 4 is 132. 34 times negative 2i is negative 68i. Negative 18i times 4 is negative 72i. And then negative 18i times negative 2i is positive 36i squared, except the i squared becomes negative 1, which changes this to a negative 36. And this still isn't going to do what I want. I... <laughs> So, oh, because this isn't 132. 34 times 4 is 136. I, I know it may sound like cheating, but knowing the answer in mind can actually help you catch mistakes between the beginning and the end. So 34 times 4 is 136. Okay, so combine the real parts, 136 minus 36 is 100. Combine the imaginary parts, negative 68i, negative 72i is a bigger negative i. 68 and 72 is 140. All this is over 20. We split into two fractions, 100 over 20, minus 140 over 20i. Both not only reduce, they flat out divide into 5 and minus 7i, which is what I predicted. So again, the purpose of this video, which now makes this series have seven videos, but we'll say out of six still, is mistakes happen. Sometimes they're caught sooner, sometimes they're caught later. But the worst thing is when they're not caught at all. Or, I should say the worst thing is when they're caught, but you don't learn anything from them. The mistake that I made is that I combined the wrong terms. And if I can do it, if I can do it, your professor, TJC professor for going on 20 years, UT Tyler professor, two degrees in mathematics, if I can make that casual mistake, anyone can. So the moral of the story is be careful, be focused, and uh, you should be okay. <laughs>